Good afternoon and good evening to everyone connecting to this webinar today. My name is Sandy Masters and I am the founder, host, and producer of live and online weekly classes through the Prepatomy Virtual Classroom community. This is something that was started about a year ago because of a passion for helping risk and insurance professionals achieve their education goals. I work with subject matter experts, I call them my instructor extraordinaires, in the virtual classroom to provide live and online guided instruction for students preparing to pass exams for CPCU, ARM, AIC, AAI, and AINS. A copy of this slide deck and the recording will be posted to the Prepatomy website within 24 hours of this live seminar. So you can share it with your friends and coworkers. And those that cannot attend tonight are going to receive a link, those that registered. So we had about 60 people register. If we're lucky, we'll have about 30 that actually show up. You know how webinars go. <laughs> but what's nice is you've got the recordings, and I like that. So we have a lot to cover, and we want to give you a great start and answer a lot of questions. You've made a commitment to attend today's session as a currently enrolled student or a potential student looking for more information. So the value you will receive by listening and interacting in today's session is through answering the most common questions. So here's some of the things we're going to cover. First, we don't assume that everyone knows how to use the GoToWebinar virtual classroom tool. And this is what we use for our classes. So I'll just go over a few housekeeping items and show you how you can interact in tonight's live session. But we'll also answer questions about what does it take or what's required to earn the CPCU, ARM, AIC, AAI, and AINS designations. And is there anyone interested in earning the CPCU designation by the Hawaii Conferment? We'll definitely share with you a track for that. We'll also share study tips from successful students, and if you've been successful, I would love for you to share your success uh, tips as well so that we can all benefit from what you've learned. And also, we'll talk about options for guided instruction through Prepatomy, and also talk about other providers and different learning methodologies, because I'm a big believer you have to find out what works for you. Everyone has their own learning style, and as long as you find that perfect uh, style that works for you, then I think that's great because it just helps you achieve your education goals. We'll talk about connecting outside of class. We'll talk about um, how the classes are structured pre uh, through Prepatomy. And then at the end, I'll turn off the recording, and we're going to do what I call a web safari, where I take you out to the Institute's website and show you uh, the ethics requirement. Some people uh, are curious about exam pass rates for the various programs. I'll share with you information about the Institute's community, which is an, a tremendous resource to connect with other people studying for Institute exams and get your questions answered. And then um, if you want to find live physical classes in your local community, I'll give you some ideas on how you could find those that may not even be listed at the Institute's website. Uh, and then we'll show you how to access smart online practice exams. And then um, we'll show you the Prepatomy virtual classroom community, which are the live and online weekly classes. So I think that's enough information. I try to keep it to 30 to 45 minutes, but it depends on how many questions you have. And we want to make it interactive, so we'll give you an opportunity to do that in just a moment. So before we get to the interactivity part, I do want to say that the CPCU, ARM, AIC, and AAI, and AINS designations are the property of the institutes. Prepatomy is a public course sponsor listed at the institute's website that provides guided instruction through live and online weekly classes to help students prepare for the required examinations. Students are conferred the designation by the institutes. Prepatomy does not authorize or confer the designation, so you would always want to go to the institutes.org to check out the latest in the program requirements. Having said that, I'm showing you a picture of the GoToWebinar viewer window, and you can resize it in the lower right corner to suit your needs. 
and you can expand it by hitting the square box. Definitely don't hit the X because you know what that does. It closes out your viewer window. But what I want you to notice is the control panel, the little orange arrow. And what a lot of people don't realize is that little orange arrow opens and closes the control panel. And unless you have it set up under the view menu at the top where you uncheck the auto hide control panel, I always ask students to do that and then it keeps the control panel open so you can easily see the question stream and you can easily enter your questions there and um, it just allows you to be able to see what's going on in the class by unchecking the auto hide control panel. Now, most of you, it looks like you're using your mic and speakers, which is great. Now, a best practice as a virtual student is to use a headset with a mic uh, built in, a USB type key headset is great, especially if you have a fast internet connection, because then you can use the voice over internet protocol. If you have dial up or a slow connection or you're using wireless or something, it's almost better to dial in via telephone. And the session always gives the telephone option where you dial the phone number, the access code, and you have a special two-digit PIN that you have to enter to be able to be unmuted during class. And what happens is I could see that Samantha, you dialed in by phone, that's great. You entered in your two-digit PIN, so if I wanted to unmute you and say hello and have a conversation, you did it perfectly. Now everyone else, um, if I unclick someone that has a um, mic showing and you're not using a headset, sometimes there's that reverberation background noise because of your internal mic in your laptop or computer um, reverberating my voice back into the external uh, audio mic portion. So uh, that's why we always say use a headset because then it avoids that. And a lot of times some people don't even realize they don't have an internal mic built in. So if you don't have a headset, then all you're going to hear is me speaking on your speakers, which is fine too if you just want to listen. So the question box, we're going to use that tonight where you just type in um, your question or your comment and click send and I'll be able to see all of those and I'll check periodically and share great information with the uh, program or participants tonight. And then the final thing is that raise hand. So um, when you see the raise hand, if you click on the raise hand, it'll raise your hand and I'll see your little hand raise. So let's see how many people are listening to me right now. And if you can have found your raised hand, click on it. So Maria found it, Richard found it, Renee, Marcia, Samantha, Tammy, Veronica, anyone else? Only half the class found the little raised hand button on the right hand side. It's this little thing right here. Anyone else? Okay, we've already got our multitaskers here. So I've lowered all your hands. No more raising hands right now. So that's how we're going to interact tonight. And then um, I will invite people to be unmuted as well during the class. So we always save the chat and question log because sometimes students just share great information. We want to make that available to students. So that's also uh, available. So we have students who join these live and online classes from across the world, actually. I've had students dial in from the Cayman Islands, from Brazil, um, from London, from Canada, and uh, getting more and more of all 50 states. So it's, it's pretty exciting to see the students who are located in remote areas that do not have access to classes at all have this opportunity to dial in once a week and um, be able to interact and, and go through the study material together. And all of the people that take prep anatomy classes have very diverse work experiences. And I don't know if you've ever seen a Wordle art before, but this is from Wordle.net, W-O-R-D-L-E.net, and it you can just copy and paste a, a whole bunch of text in there, and it creates this pictorial. And what I did is I took the, all the titles from the prep anatomy database, and this is a representation of how many times that word was mentioned in the title section of the prep anatomy database. So you can see we have a lot of managers taking classes, uh, claims managers, risk managers, account managers, adjusters, um, supervisors, analysts, coordinators, underwriters, claims, etc. So it's very exciting that we get this diversity of experience. So when people share during class, you get a lot of different perspectives. And that's something that you don't necessarily get when you're studying on your own. So we're going to see if we can get 90% participation. This is the participation. Um, thank you, Christine. And thank you, Debbie. Hi. <laughs> 
Okay, so the, I'm going to launch uh, three poll questions, and I'm only going to give you like a countdown of five to answer yes or no. They're super easy. So this is the first question that I'm launching, and it is, uh, do you have a LinkedIn profile? And I'll give you a countdown, five, four, three, two, one, last chance. Okay, so we got 84% voted on this one. I'm going to close the poll and share the results. And it looks like 75% uh, of you have a LinkedIn profile. And the reason why I asked this question is we have a Prebatomy LinkedIn group. And this is where we share a lot of articles from the class. And I invite you to go out and check out the Prebatomy LinkedIn group because there's a lot of uh, conversations and good information, good links to learners um, for all the classes that we offer. Okay, so now, and let's go ahead and share, whoops, I want to hide this one. Let's go ahead and do the second poll question. And on your screen, it's asking you, have you ever taken a live and online virtual class through anywhere, through college or university, through a webinar training session, through your company? Put in yes or no. And I'll give you a countdown, five, four, Three, two, one. Okay, this time we got 89% voting. So I'm going to close the poll and share the results. And it looks like 65% of you have taken a, a live and online virtual class in some form or fashion, which is great. But 35% of you have not. So we really spend a lot of time uh, teaching you the tools of the trade in the virtual classroom and, and spend time to give you the opportunity to interact with the instructor and your fellow students during the classes. Okay, so last question. I'm going to hide that one. Last question. And I'm asking you, have you ever taken an exam offered by the institutes? Like a CPCU, an ARM, an AIC, an AINS? And I'll give a countdown, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, we couldn't get past that 89%. That's okay. So I'm going to close the poll and share the results. And 82% of you have taken an institute exam. So that is great news, but 18% of you have not. And a classroom for your first exam is sometimes a great way to go because you get all of those insider tips and tricks. And then eventually you might try going it alone uh, on self-study, and that works for some people as well. So. Um, in our database, the Prebatomy database, this is our website registrant stats because I asked the same question of the people who register at the Prebatomy website. So 43% said they had a LinkedIn profile, 37% said they had taken virtual classes before, and 49% said they had taken institute exams before. So a lot less on the yes side. Uh, for my uh, people who take classes at Prepatomy than what we have here represented tonight. So appreciate the time that you took to answer those poll questions. So now I want to give, I'm going to lower everyone's hands. I know Christine and Debbie, you had your hand raised. I'm going to lower the hands now. So everyone's hands are lowered. And I want you to type into the question box, where are you joining us from? city and state, and what do you hope to get out of this webinar? So use the question box. And then uh, I recognize some names here. Hi, Sharon, and hello, Marsha and Maria. I'm saying hi to people that I've talked to by phone before. And if anyone feels comfortable and want to raise your hand and be unmuted to make a comment or ask a question, that would be great. And while I'm waiting for at least one or two or three people to raise their hand, I will tell you where various people are calling in from. So Renee's calling in from Reno. Hello, Renee. Marsha's in San Antonio. Uh, Yaju is in Woodland Hills. I hope I said your name correct, Yaju. Uh, I apologize if I did not, but maybe we can speak by phone sometime, and then I'll be able to match a name with a face. Lori is Scottsdale. Kevin, Bloomington, Illinois. Maria, Rockland, California. And Sharon is um, Baltimore, Maryland. All right, and Renee is um, looking for information concerning how the classes are run, so we're definitely going to talk about that. And Richard's calling in from New Providence, New Jersey. 
Alexia, Scottsdale, Arizona. She wants to learn more about the CPC process, and we will talk a lot about that. Debbie, Lebanon, Ohio. Jason, Broadspire, or Minneapolis, Minnesota, so Broadspires. Uh, and you're in one of our classes. You're one of our students that's going to start. That I'm so excited about that. Christine, and yes, Los Angeles. Thank you. Yalu, okay, yes. And the J is like an L. Okay, thank you. Tammy, Boise, Idaho. Veronica, Stafford, Virginia. Hoping to gain enough knowledge to attain our ARM designation and share the information learned with the rest of our colleagues. That's great. Samantha Scottsdale. I'm located in Chandler, Arizona, so thus uh, a lot of Arizona folks. Thank you very much. Um, Jason is hoping to get prepared for the ARM 56 exam. Sherry's calling in from Dallas. And... Um, Yalu is hoping to get tips for the exams. We will definitely talk about that. Michelle from Phoenix. Sherry, uh, getting the CPCU designation within a two-year period. It is a doable goal, but you have to be very, very disciplined and very, very focused. And I think it is definitely a worthy professional goal to set for yourself. Samantha, the insurance belt. Okay, where would that be? <laughs> Oh, uh, and Richard, I like his thinking, getting ready to pass his CBCU 540. So uh, he's looking forward to the class. He's uh, one of our students registered, getting ready for CBCU 540, which starts on September 9th. So thank you, Sherry, and thank you, Debbie. They have their hands raised, so I'll go in alpha order. Debbie, you're first. I'm going to unmute you and say hello. How are you doing, Debbie? Debbie Snyder, how are you? You can go ahead and say hello. And Debbie, it probably is a situation where you're not using a um, headset, so maybe your internal mic's not picking up your voice. So I'm going to go ahead and put you on mute. You could switch to the telephone if you want, uh, or just listen in. That's fine, too. So Sherry, I'm going to unmute you. Sherry. Hi, Sherry. How are you? Uh, good, good. Now, are you using a headset or no headset? No, I'm just going to Okay, yeah. So without a headset, there's kind of a little bit of reverberation. So that's something that I would consider getting is a headset with a USB port to plug into your computer, and then we'll have a nice, clear, crisp voice, and we'll be able to hear you. But I appreciate you raising your hand and be willing to be unmuted. So I went ahead and muted Sherry again. And Kevin, we'll try one more person. Kevin, how are you doing tonight? Good, how are you? Good. Okay, now, Kevin, are you using a headset? Yes, I am. Okay, now, listen how nice that sounds. You've got an amazing voice. <laughs> oh, thanks. This is great. So it's like we're, we're in the same room talking and chatting. So the headset makes all the difference in the world, and I, I truly do recommend that. So, Kevin, did you have a comment or a question or something you'd like to share with the group tonight? No, I just wanted to verify that all my setup is working okay so I can pass 56 in November. Yes, you're going to do it. Yes, you will. Great. Well, I'm so glad you're here, and I'm glad your setup seems to be working just fine. You'll be able to participate, and uh, you know the raise hand. You've done your uh, question box, so you are good to go. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks. Okay, so what we do is um, we have all the lines on mute, and then we... Um, unmute lines throughout the class to interact with the students. But we also use the question box quite a bit so that you can make comments and share information. And uh, me as the host producer, I'm always watching in the background and answering questions. And, and um, when there's a good question that comes up for the instructor, then I, uh, when there's a good breaking point, I um, you know, ask the instructor the question. And so we can have more of a radio style experience in the virtual classroom. So. Okay, and Christine, you have your hand raised. I'm going to lower your hand. Now raise your hand again if you want me to unmute you. I notice you switched to the telephone. Okay. How are you tonight, Christine? I'm great. How are you guys? Great, great. I'm so glad you're here. So did you have a comment or a question? No, I just wanted to check in and uh, see what it's all about. And, awesome. Um, for some reason, I didn't put my name in there. But uh, again, yeah, everyone no. knows me now. 
Oh, good. Well, yeah, no worries at all. I'm so glad you're here. We're going to cover a lot of information in the next 30 minutes or so, and I'm super happy that everyone was able to practice with uh, the audio portion via phone or via mic and speakers, and also using the question box and the raise hand. So glad you're here, Christine, and please, please do um, uh, raise your hand again if you want to make a question or a comment, and I'll be watching for that. Okay, so here we go. Uh, why earn designations? Now, most of you know this because you've taken institute exams. You uh, get that increased level of knowledge and understanding. You're learning new abilities and skills. Uh, getting that uh, successful completion of courses and that designation after your name, that sense of personal satisfaction. The increased competence and uh, enha enhanced self-confidence and self-esteem. And I know a lot of people that it's been years since they've been doing some kind of comprehensive college level course and taking institute courses is what gives them that uh, motivation and confidence to go on to achieve even greater educational goals, perhaps getting an associate's, undergraduate, master's, or maybe even a, a PhD. Uh, recently, I, I sent out a question to one of the CPCU groups in the LinkedIn and asked if anyone would be willing to share a testimonial about why did they uh, go for the CPC or, or other institute designation. And Diane said obtaining her CPC designation opened doors for her that have truly changed her life. The CPC designation doesn't just teach you what you need for your current job, but how our industry works and many different facets that the industry plays in our economy. And Fred said, besides the visibility within an organization that earning the CPCU designation can provide, I can honestly say that the overall curriculum material helped me to learn the basics of several functional areas of insurance companies beyond what you could learn in your day-to-day -day job duties. And Anne said, taking the exams and obtaining the designation opened doors that otherwise would not have been opened. The knowledge that I retained from the studies gave me the opportunity to help others with less experience. And it is pretty exciting when uh, we teach a segment, a chapter within a course, and then there was a particular tool or worksheet uh, provided, and then the next week the student come back, comes back to class, and I said, you're not going to believe this. I was able to show this worksheet to my supervisor, and we incorporated it into our workflow. So it just kind of gives you additional information that you might be able to use in your job, and if you're in a job that's not using the content or information, it's something that is good to know uh, in building your career. So the institutes, they have a very long history of providing college level textbook material uh, on a risk and insurance topics. And what you're seeing is a picture the, of the blue book. It's an ARM uh, risk assessment, the new uh, ARM 54 course. And then the white book, the all-important course guide, and we'll talk about more about that course guide and uh, study tips. But uh, that's the two basic things that you need is the course guide, the textbook reading, and every textbook has at least 200 pages of reading and multiple chapters, anywhere from 8 to 13 chapters, just depending on the course. And then the, the course guide, the white book, helps you break down the educational objectives for the course. And, and you'll learn, if you've never taken a course, most of you have, but some of you haven't, uh, the test comes from the educational objectives listed in the course and the course guide. And we'll talk more about that as well. So reading is very important. Writing is very important. Finding real world examples is really important. And we encourage students to share articles that they're reading, links, and we put them in the LinkedIn group and share them with the class in the weekly email. And then we encourage you to talk about what you know. Go back and share the information that you're learning with your coworkers. And then recycling it, putting it into your own words. The workbook is the course guide. The white book is really good for that because you can write out the answers to the educational objectives in there, and it really does a good job of breaking down the educational objective into its component parts. So let's go ahead and um, spend a little time talking about the five different programs. And what you're getting here is a snapshot of what's required to earn the CPCU designation. So basically, it's eight exams total plus the ethics course. So the foundation courses, there are four of them, 500, 525, 30, 540. And then the concentration area courses in commercial lines or personal lines. So you have to choose a concentration area, and you get three more courses. So that makes seven. And then at the bottom, it shows you the electives that are uh, available. You choose your elective. 
from the list there. And the ethics exam, that's something separate, and it's called Ethics 312. And it's an online course. It's free. I think you can pay $5 and get six hours of credit for the CPCU ethics course. And um, you could sign up for that right now and just go through the nine modules. It would take you about 30 minutes per module. And then there's a 50-question exam that you'll take online. It's not proctored. You don't have to pay anything. So you could take it as many times as you want. And then once you pass with a 70%, of the 50 questions correct, then you get credit on your transcript and you go to the institutes.org under the, the courses Ethics 312 is what you would need. So that's something easy to do right away. There is also an experience requirement where you have to have um, two years work experience within a five year period immediately preceding you passing your last national exam. And they, they ask you to matriculate after you register for your first exam. They're going to ask you to matriculate. It's just paying a fee, $75. They make it really easy now. And it's just declaring that you are a CBCU candidate. And so it says that you're going to agree to abide by the Code of Professional Ethics and so on and so forth. So eight exams total, four foundation courses, choose a concentration area. And you'll notice, even if you choose the Commercial Alliance concentration area, you're not going to get away with getting a CPCU without at least getting a survey of personal insurance and financial planning. And the same is true if you choose personal lines. You're going to get that survey of commercial insurance and learn all about commercial property and liability and farm insurance and all that good stuff. So, and then what's nice is it, whether you're in claims or whether you work in an agency or you're a risk manager or you're um, an underwriter, they give you some electives there that focus on the area that you work, which is, which is nice. So you can take the exams in any order. It doesn't matter because they're all self-contained. They don't really build upon each other. I mean, I look at e at each chapter within the course as its own segment. So it's very, very much um, segmented in the courses, and you can take them in air, any order. OK, so for those interested in the Hawaii track, and um, here is what a possible you know, uh, schedule that you might have. So let's say you're going to start off right away, and you're going to take CPC 540 through about me. You might as well get the finance and accounting out of the way. Hey, I did that. I took the finance and accounting first, but I was a finance major in college, so it was a little bit different for me. But um, if you take three exams next year and then three exams the year after that, and then you take your last exam by June 15th of 2016, you'll be going to Hawaii in September of 2016. And there's actually three extra exam windows to take exams in there, and so you don't even have to double up on exams. And the important thing to remember is you have to complete your last exam between July 15th of 2015 or June 15th of 2016 to be invited to the Hawaii conferment. So they definitely have deadlines and cutoffs for who's going to get invited to Hawaii. And just to give you an example, the last time they, they went to Hawaii, I think it was 2007? maybe, but the time before that, oh boy, now I'm really dating myself. Okay, so the time before that, it was 1997. Um, oh, no, 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 it was 1996. Okay, so 1996. I actually delayed my last exam to go to the conferment in New York in 1997 um, to meet within that window because I had never been to New York before, and fortunate for me, I had been to Hawaii, so that was very exciting. So, um, yeah, that's a good Hawaii track. So I think taking three exams a year is very aggressive. I mean, in the olden days, people would take one exam a year, and then after that, two exams a year. But now we have a lot of college grads that know they just want to get their CPCU designation, so they're, they're getting their, all their exams done you know, within a two-year period. So, and there's even some students who have to wait to get their two-year experience requirement because they've done all the exam requirements, but they don't have enough work experience. So uh, that's kind of interesting, too. So a lot of people are getting through the material faster. Let's look at the associate in claims. And this is an area that has become quite specialized. It used to be broader based, and you would just take four exams to earn the associate in claims. Well, now you pick a track. So you have foundation courses. Everyone's required to take AIC 30 and AINS 21. And um, 
and then you pick your track, whether you're a property specialist, multi-line liability, personal auto, or workers' comp, and then you have some additional requirements, usually either two or three exams. So I'm expecting to offer all of those courses within a two, two and a half year period and have them available to adjusters and those that work in the claims area. So same thing, you do have to complete an ethics course. It does not include the CPCU Code of Professional Ethics, and it's called um, Ethics 311, and it's just called Ethical Guidelines for Insurance Professionals. So, but it's the same 50-question exam. You're just not tested on the CPCU Code of Ethics. And if you're curious, the CPCU Code of Professional Ethics um, includes uh, nine canons and 23 rules that if you are a student or a candidate and even a CPCU, you agree to abide by those, um, those canons and rules. Like one of them is placing the public interest above your own. So what I'm gonna just take a pause. We still are gonna talk about ARM and we're gonna talk about AAI and AINS, but I noticed that Christine and Ken have their hands raised and I do wanna answer questions. So use your, um, question box if you want to type in a question and um, I'll go ahead and unmute Christine first. How are you Christine? Did you have a question or a comment? I'm, I'm fine. Okay um, great. I'm going to go I, ahead and lower your hand then okay? And uh, on your side it'll say raise hand so if you want to raise your hand you click the raise hand button. So um, that's fine. So Ken, I'm going to, well, Ken doesn't have his pin entered, so I can't unmute you. So, but he's calling in from Sun City. And, oh, Sharon's asking, are there any designations you might be adding? Uh, type into the question box which ones you think I can add. The ones that I'm doing right now, I have to focus somewhere. These are the ones that seem to be the most popular. And I've heard there's like kind of a renewed interest in AU, the associate in underwriting. But anyone, yep, Sharon says AU. Okay, so that's a possibility. Uh, it really just depends on student demand. And I need to get a critical mass going before I can get that program going. So definitely we can talk on, offline about how we might get that accomplished. So great question. Okay, any questions about CPCU, AIC, put them in your question box or raise your hand. And let's go on to, okay, Kevin, you have to put in your two-digit PIN on your phone for me to be able to unmute you, Ken. Let's see here. Uh, your PIN, you don't have to redial in on the phone. All you have to do is on your touchtone keypad, enter in pound seven nine pound. And that's under your audio panel. Uh, if you click pound seven nine pound, it will turn your phone to green, and then I'd be able to unmute you because it shows that you're dialing in for, via telephone. So I'm going to lower your hand, and when I see your headset turn green, then I'll be able to unmute you or use the uh, question box. So, okay, here we go. Uh, ARM, Associate in Risk Management, requires you to pass three national exams, and again, the Ethical Guidelines for Insurance Professionals, and there's a couple of tracks uh, you can add to the ARM designation. One of them is the Associate in Risk Management for Public Entities, so they add the dash P for public entities to your designation, and uh, we do have quite a few students that work for public entities like schools and cities and counties that take the risk management program. So that course I'm hoping to offer next year in addition to in October the brand new enterprise risk management course is coming out. So I'm very excited to um, offer that class next year as well, the enterprise risk management ERM uh, designation which requires the ARM 54, 55, 56 plus the ERM 57 course. So. Okay, and then there's the Accredited Advisor in Insurance Program. This is designed for those that work in agencies, and it really gives a good solid foundation for those that are in customer service roles, producers, um, underwriting assistance within the agency, and it covers agency operations and sales management in addition to all of the personal lines and commercial lines uh, types of policies that are sold in agencies. 
So, yeah, Tim, I'm so glad you're here. And uh, he's asking, I can't see the other people's names. And what I'm doing is I'm keeping them um, private for this session. Obviously, I'm saying your names. But when, the, when we have an actual classroom, you will get to see all the people, in your classmates in your class. And um, Tim, I'm so happy you're here. And, and if at some point you do want to make a comment or share your experience with the class, I'd love to uh, unmute you. So Ken has his phone pin entered. So Ken, how are you doing? I am fine, Sandy. How are you? Can good, you hear me? good. I can hear you just perfectly on that phone. So did you have a question or a comment? No, I'm just glad to be here. Uh, I had a little technical problem, but uh, we've gotten beyond that, um, and I, I'm glad to be on board. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much, Ken. That's what the orientation is for. I'm going to go ahead and mute your line, is uh, to work out all those technical kinks so that when we start the classes next week and the week after, we're going to get right to it, right to the material. And uh, I see Richard has raised his hand, so I'm going to unmute your line. How are you doing, Richard? Hi, Sandy. I'm doing well. How am I sounding? You sound really good. Did you have a comment or question for our group tonight? Yeah, do you recommend uh, purchasing the smart study aids through the Institute? That is a great question. Um, I talked about earlier that there's the textbook and the course guide, and the smart study aids are flashcards where you get all the key terms and phrases with the definitions on one side and the key term on the other, and then they give you a review notebook, which kind of gives you all of the highlights uh, that relate to an educational objective. It's uh, it, That itself is like 150 pages right there. And you know, we recommend at Prepatomy just the minimum, the text and the course guide, because the course guide gives you the access to the smart online exams. And then we use the review notebook to develop the notes pages that we give to you as part of the class. And we use the smart exams to develop some chat tips for you during the class, important points to remember. So it's really, it just depends on what kind of learner you are. If you've got the extra money and you like the idea of the flashcards already pre-printed for you, and then having that review notebook where it gives you just the highlights for each of the educational objectives. So some people find it very valuable. If anyone's used the smart aids before and like it and want to recommend it, um, type that into the question box, and I'll share that with Richard. But that that was a great question. Thank you. You're any welcome. any other uh, comments or questions? Okay. Uh, um, nope, that's it. Thank you. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks. So Lori, she's a CPCU self study student. Four classes completed. Awesome. So uh, she was stuck on one formula application. Where can I go for help without joining a class? I would try the institute's community. And at the end of the session, I'm going to do a web safari and show you the institute's community. Or you can also call the institutes and ask to speak to a program director for the CPCU course that you're in. And um, I have a lot of the textbooks, too. And you are certainly welcome to call me, and I'll help you work through it as well, because I've put together a couple of calculation sessions for various courses and would be happy to help you as well. But um, you could call the institutes, and I know there would be someone there to help you as well. So the institutes community, calling the toll-free number for the institutes, or I don't mind if you call me. Okay, so the let's move on to the final program, the AINS requires, this is a good foundation program for those just getting started in the insurance industry because it covers all of the personal lines and commercial lines concepts and then it gives you that solid foundation in the risk management process which is very important in all the, the basics of property and liability insurance principles that you would need to know throughout your career. And again, every single designation that the institutes offers requires the ethical guidelines for um, insurance professionals. And then CPCU requires a special um, Ethics 312, which has those uh, CPCU code and canons. Um, so either one of those ethics courses you need to take depending on the designation that you're getting. Okay, so study tips. Uh, let's see if you could take a, a nugget to apply to your particular study situation that will help you. So the biggest thing is to use weekly time management skills. You want to be reading your textbook one to two hours a week. It's, that's about how long it takes to read a chapter. Some chapters are 20 pages, some are 40 pages. 
it just depends on the content. Then you want to give yourself enough time to write in your course guide. And the reason why writing in the course guide is important is it's connecting those synapses in your brain when you're actually writing out the word on the page. And what's nice about the course guide, it gives you suggested answers. So if you're really stumped and you can't find it in the textbook, you can look at the answer in the course guide. But that being able to familiarize yourself and make sure you understand the terminology that's used uh, in these courses, that's going to help you at exam time being able to recognize the right answer. And we'll talk more about the exams in just a few moments. But you want to focus on the educational objectives. And the educational objectives are listed on the first page of every chapter in the text. And then they're repeated in the course guide. In, in front of every assignment, and you could see how they break down the educational objective by going through all of the review and discussion questions in the course guide. You could see that an educational objective may have three or four or five topics or concepts related to it, and so they really break it down for you. And then um, you want to complete that course guide. Reviewing frequently is important because, uh, especially like if you take a class, and if we do it the old-fashioned way where we cover one assignment a week, and then um, by the time you get to the end of the course, you should have already been reviewing the earlier chapters and repeating and reviewing your key terms and phrases and reviewing the discussion and review questions and reviewing your highlights in the textbook. Because reviewing frequently, it's like the first time you read something, it's like, I don't get this at all. Then you come to class, and it's like, okay, I get this. And then when you read your highlights and go back and look at your review notes, it's like, okay, I really understand this uh, concept. So a lot of people, they don't get it the first time they see it or read it, but through repetition, you will, um, you will definitely get it. So there's also the use of the smart online practice exams. And I want to give a caution here to these smart pra online practice exams because it's different people writing those practice exams. These are the exams that are available through the Institute's website. You use your 16-digit code in the course guide. It's in the front and back cover of the white book. You go in uh, to activate that code, and it gives you a year's access to these smart online practice exams. And it's usually about 10 to 30 questions per chapter per course, and you can do them over and over and over and over and over again. But at Prepatomy, we only recommend doing it maybe two or three times at most, because then you're just memorizing test questions. And I had a program director one time uh, point out something that very important that made me really um, think about the course guide and using that as a stronger tool and measure. Because the SMART exams, let's say you have an educational objective that tests a uh, that has four different concepts related to it, A, B, C, and D. And maybe in the SMART exam databank, they only have two sample questions that relate to uh, concept A and B of that educational objective, and you never get a practice question for C and D. But then, lo and behold, here you take the national exam, and there's those other sample test questions. And the, the real exam is written by a whole different group of people than those that are writing those practice exams. And, uh, they even put, added, I noticed this last year, a huge disclaimer on those SMART exams that uh, just because you're scoring in the 90% range on the SMART exams doesn't mean that you're ready if you have not read the book or if you have not uh, completed the course guide because you can get stumped on that. So um, for 540, is the second edition the most recent? Thank you for that question. I'm grabbing my book right now. Yes, Finance and Accounting for Insurance Professionals, second edition, issued by Michael, or edited by Michael Elliott, and second edition course guide. So that's the uh, textbooks that we're using. And um, I believe they're still giving exams under the first edition through mid-year, or through the end of this year, I think. So if you have the old books, then you still have the opportunity to take that exam through the end of this year. So thank you, Richard, for that. So smart online exams, they're great for practice, but don't rely on them solely as your prep method for the, the uh, exam. So here, here is uh, what the exams are all about. You're going to get anywhere from 60 to 85 questions, depending on the course, and most of the exams are multiple choice. They, they are 
you know, slowly but surely converting all the exams to multiple choice, but there's a few that still are essay style. Uh, most of the exams are two hours to complete the exam, and you're going to test at a Prometric. There are some approved on-site locations. If you work for a large employer that has a training department in a room with computers, they usually like to provide the conven convenience of an on-site testing location. There are special arrangements for international students, so you definitely need to check the Institute's website if you're interested in that. The Institutes give their exams in four 60-day exam windows, so these are the exam windows shown. So all the classes that we're starting next week and the week after, are um, we're gearing the students to take their exam between the October 15th and December 15th window. And then uh, one of the things I like to remind the students, and we do this in the class, uh, is that you get a discounted registration fee if you register by the first day in the window. If you don't, then you pay about $60 more. They call it a regular registration fee. So I always encourage the students to get registered for the exam. You can pay for it by the deadline. You don't have to schedule it right away, but we encourage students to go ahead and pay and then schedule because then you're committed to a date, and then we encourage students to test within a week or two after the class ends. So I, I just give people an idea of the investment per course because I usually get a lot of questions about that. So if you just buy the recommended materials package from the Institute's website, the textbook and course guide is 170 and then um, we mentioned the smart study aids, the optional flashcards, review notes. There is a smart quiz me app, I think it's about 10 bucks through the iTunes store or through um, the Android market. Uh, smart quiz me apps and then the institutes they offer online asynchronous classes for CPCU, AINS and I think AIC as the other program and they're run a little bit differently than Prepatomy classes it's basically access to course content 24-7 and you can post messages to an instructor if you have questions so you have an access to a subject matter expert but it's still I consider it um, Asynchronous is 24-7, so on your own, self-study, self-pace. So if that works for you, then that's available. And then you have an exam fee. It's $185 for the ARM56 course. And then uh, the class fee for Prepatomy is $275, and that goes to pay the cost of the host, producer, and, and the instructor extraordinaire. And then the class fee that you pay, the prices do vary, and it's paid to the public course sponsor. So I, Prepatomy is a public course sponsor. There's a lot of CPC chapters that are public course sponsors, and I'll show you at the Institute's websites. There are 16 public course sponsors listed there, but then I'm also going to show you that a lot of the CPC chapters aren't listed, and they offer live local classes where you can actually go meet a live person, so I want to make sure you know how to find those classes that are available. So some of the larger major cities have very good programs like Atlanta or Boston and even here in Arizona. I can show you their website as well. So here's a, a sample investment per course for CPCU 540. So the course guide and textbook is 175. The exam fee is 250. So CPC is a little bit more expensive. And then the class fee is 299. So that just gives you an example of the um, prices there. So Prepatomy, we offer trimester classes. We start classes in January, May, and September. So kind of like college, you know, you're used to starting classes in the winter or spring session, the summer session, and then the fall, fall winter session. And I don't offer classes every quarter because I don't really want to start classes in November where you have Thanksgiving and Christmas and then you have to test in January, February when my other classes are starting in January, February, so I, so I decided to keep kind of the traditional college type thinking. So that's where I'm going to be promoting um, going to class starting uh, January, May, and September. So yes, the 540 class will be pr finished prior to Thanksgiving, and we're hoping that everyone will decide to take their exam right away so they can have a nice Thanksgiving holiday. And if not, you have to test by December 15th anyway, and then you'll at least you'll be able to enjoy a nice uh, Christmas holiday as well. So, 
And let's talk about the Prepatomy live class structure. What are you going to experience? Now, uh, I work with the instructor, and this, all of the instructors are award-winning instructors by the institutes. They've been recognized for their outstanding course leadership. And they, uh, they are recognized for this because they know how to focus on the educational objectives for the course. And we build in inner activities throughout the class because we realize some of you are kinesthetic learners, you need something to do, some of you are social learners, you like to connect with fellow students and kind of come together. So we try to make it as interactive as possible uh, along with providing the information that you need for the exam. So we offer poll questions to clarify your understanding. We're, we're wanting to know if you're getting it during class and we can get a quick sense of that by doing poll questions and sample uh, questions. And then as you have in this session, you have the ability to raise your hand and ask questions during class. We always do open mic at the beginning and the end of class and we'll stay as long as you need us if you need us to help work out a problem that you have in the course guide, we'll do that. And the instructor, I think what's great about having classes is a lot of times the courses will teach a concept, but the stories or analogies are not well developed to where you can get it easily. And so uh, most of our instructors are practitioners and they have many, many years of experiences and they have these great stories to share. And in addition to the instructors, I mean, it's just amazing the student experience that we have as well. When students get involved and share their experience, that really helps as well. And we do something fun for the Prepatomy classes. We give a Most Interested Student Award because the GoToWebinar tool gives an interest rating score and it's kind of a proprietary algorithm that, you know, depending on how many questions you ask, how many times you raise your hand, how many poll questions you answer, we give points for answering, you know, quiz questions and being, we call it the quick chaw quiz uh, person who answers the right question or, or the correct question first. So we add up all the points throughout the class and at the end the class, the most interested student gets recognized and they receive a $50 gift certificate to their favorite restaurant to go celebrate when they pass their national exam. So it's just something fun that we do in class to kind of give something uh, for people who are contest oriented. <laughs> so, And there are many uh, options for joining a live class on the go. You can use the GoToMeeting app on your tablet or smartphone. Now the tablet my understanding, they had worked out the kinks to where you can raise your hand and we can unmute you. And I know someone is dialing in via their tablet. They had mentioned they had some problems where they couldn't raise their hand, but I thought that they had worked out the um, those features on the tablet. Now, if you're dialing in via your smartphone, and we have set students do this, they uh, listen into the class and they use the notes pages that are sent out ahead of the class, and these are notes pages where you can take additional notes throughout class and really focus on the important concepts. So some people are stuck in airports, they're traveling, uh, and they or they don't have an internet connection, and they can just dial in by phone. That's uh, fine as well. And then from the office or home using your PC or laptop. So basically, internet connection, if you're going to do voice over IP, it's better to do wired rather than wireless. And um, and then use a headset, that would be great. So a lot of options to join the live class. So this is the sample schedule and all of the brochures are located at the Prepatomy website that give the details for the, the um, different chapters. So this gives you an idea of the different topics in the 540 class. So wonderful gap and statutory accounting, cash flow bonds, investment portfolio management, capital management, the underwriting cycle, so all sorts of good topics uh, in CPCU 540. Very excited to have uh, Dawn Safine from ISO over Risk is going to be teaching that. She has a pretty substantial uh, finance background, so I'm really looking forward to her teaching that class. All of the classes are recorded and posted to the Prep Academy website for the convenience of the students who are registered in class. So what's great is if you miss a class, you don't have to feel like you're falling behind. You just go listen to the recording, and I try to get those posted within 24 hours of the class. So, um, so Kevin's asking, a meeting invite with links and details for the course we are taking will be sent out how far in advance of the class. So 
Um, usually just a couple days before class, I'll send the go to webinar link with all the dates. And so ARM, let's see, AINS 23 starts on Tuesday, so I'll probably get that one out tomorrow. And also Wednesday, ARM 56 starts, so I'll, I'll probably get that email out to students tomorrow as well. And it will have a, it'll come from GoToWebinar, it will list all the dates for the class, and then you get a weekly reminder one hour prior to the class. So the way that you get a lot of communication email, you get a pre-class email from me with the notes pages that you can print out and use, and you can, uh, and then you get the one hour before class, the link to join the live class, and it's the same link in every email, so I always tell the students save an email somewhere because if you, you know, uh, aren't at your computer and you can always join using the link that's printed out in any of the confirmation emails that you receive. And then there's a follow-up the day after the class is over. We send a follow-up because there's things that are discussed in class, so we uh, include links to articles and, and uh, I just advise you that the recording is available to listen to. So yeah, Renee, um, what's nice is the classes are recorded, posted to the Prepatomy website, so you sign, you log into the Prepatomy website, and then you access your class, and I post the recordings in reverse order with the notes pages and chat tips, the downloadable notes pages and chat tips. So you have the recording, which is up to two hours for each class, and then those notes pages and chat tips posted in reverse order. So great questions. So here's, uh, we're doing bodily injury claims, AIC 37, it's part of the workers' comp claims uh, designation track. That starts September 12th. Nancy Germond is hilarious, great instructor, and it's, you notice it only has eight chapters, a much shorter, and we have a couple of skip weeks built in there. Um, I made the mistake of having a class on Halloween last year, and I don't think I'll do that again. <laughs> so no class on Halloween this year. And then AINS 22 starts next uh, Thursday. And this is actually, I'm starting a second track, so this is a 1.30 Central, 11.30 Pacific time start, start time, it's a little bit different, and uh, 3.30 Eastern. So if you know anyone that really needs to hit the personal lines contracts hard, we're starting that class September 5th, Thursday afternoon. And then AINS 23, that starts on Tuesday. Um, and you can see it covers both commercial property and commercial general liability and all of those other forms, business income, workers' comp, employers' liability, business owners' farm, specialty, a lot, a lot of information. So, okay, so why am I showing Michael Phelps? And I always like to tell this story that, um, you know, that's his coach there, coaching him, and I was a big fan of the Olympics, and what you're really doing if you decide to take a class through Prepatomy is you're just hiring a coach, a guide on the side, I call it, and, um, you know, we, all we could do is, like, coach you, it's like, Michael Phelps' coach cannot, you know, build up his muscle, he's got to exercise his own muscles to become a, a better swimmer, so, um, one of the things that I always say is enrolling in a class with a subject matter expert is a lot like hiring a coach. You still have to do the heavy lift, lifting and exercise that mind muscle. And we're going to do everything in our power to help guide you. You'll always have someone to talk to and ask questions of. And, um, you know, as much as you can take advantage of that opportunity, it's there for you. But we also realize that everyone has their own way of getting through courses, and it can be challenging sometimes when you're balancing work and family and community activities and other commitments. So I think that's why students really love the recordings, too, because, you know, if you have a business meeting or a family event, you don't feel like you have to miss uh, the class because it's recorded. So, um, okay, so Sharon's asking, what time do the classes start? Most of the classes start uh, Monday through Thursday nights at uh, 4 p.m. Pacific, which is 7 p.m. Eastern. I'm trying to cover all the mainland time zones. And then I started the second track because eventually I want to be offering uh, the second track um, at, like at 2 Pacific, which would be 5 Eastern. However, the second track where I'm offering the AINS 22, that one happens to start at 1.30 Central or 2.30 Eastern and then um, 11.30 uh, Pacific. But I have one company that's supporting that class and giving their 
employees time off to go to that uh, live and on class. So that's the reason why I was able to start that second track. So great question. So yes, uh, we are going to have a copy of the slideshow and I have your email address, Samantha. Great question. And I will be posting the recording and the slide deck that you can download are all included in the follow-up email. So. And thank you, Ken. I had a great conversation with Ken on the phone. He's joining the 540 class. He says, if you want happiness for a lifetime, help the next generation. Haha, <laughs> thanks. Okay, so what makes Probatomy live and online weekly classes unique? Uh, first of all, it's the expert instruction. You have people that are not only subject matter experts, but pr practitioners in their field. You have the interactive and engaging weekly sessions, uh, the little competition for the most interested student award, which makes it interesting and fun. You can join from anywhere in the world, and all the live classes are recorded. You get an extra set of notes pages and chat tips from the class, and you have access to your guide on the side that will answer any question that you have and get you pointed in the right direction. And then the social community through the LinkedIn group, I'd encourage you to uh, connect with fellow students that way. And what's kind of fun, too, in some of the classes, if there's common conferences, we've had students say, hey, is anyone going to the RIMS conference? Let's connect and meet. So it's kind of fun, and you can connect through LinkedIn. Most people are used to using LinkedIn to connect with their fellow classmates and fellow professionals, and that makes it nice as well. So how many hours are the classes per day? So it's basically we meet once a week. And if it's lighter material, it's 90 minutes. And if it's heavier material, like CPCU, it's two hours. ARM is two hours as well. That's pretty heavy material. But like the AINS, that's 90 minutes. Great question. Is it necessary to take the ARM courses in order? And, and I say no. ARM 54, 55, and 56. ARM 54 is considered the foundation um, risk assessment, uh, the basics. And then you have. Um, Oh, why am I drawing a blank here? We just got done with our risk assessment and treatment. So we had risk principles, risk management principles and practices as the first course, and then risk assessment and treatment, and then um, we're doing the risk financing in the fall. So they, they don't really build on each other because they're separate. Um, self-contained topics, but maybe um, they will mention reinsurance in the foundation ARM54 course, and then you cover it in a whole chapter in the ARM56. So um, I've had students take it out of order. I took 55 first, and then I took 54, and then I took 56. It just depends on your schedule. And we are offering 54 again in January, so great question. Okay, so poll question. We are almost done here. This is the last poll question. And on your screen, it's asking you, are you ready for the live and online class? And I'll just give you a countdown. Five, four, three. Let's see if we can get 90% of those that are remaining here. Two, two and a half. Oh. One. Okay. So I'm going to close the poll and share the results. We got 88% of the people to vote. So thank you very much. And 93% of you said, yes, send me more details. So uh, right after this session, I'm going to um, go ahead and email the handout for this. And then tomorrow I will send the link to the recording so you could share with your friends. And I do want to, since Tim has raised his hand, um, if you don't mind, because I know he'll just have something very great to say. So I'm going to unmute Tim, who has been involved in the ARM program with Probatomy. How are you doing tonight, Tim? I'm doing fine, thanks. I, uh, I, I was used to the normal Probatomy uh, emails that reminded, you, reminded me of the web uh, tune-in for the webinar, and I forgot that this orientation session was a little bit different. So I fumbled around a little bit until I found the, uh, the email where you had very clearly listed the procedure and the, and the link, and I finally joined in progress. <laughs> so I, I apologize. <laughs> apologize and I'm, that glad, was I'm glad you're here. And you got to listen to a little bit about what I said. And you, as a, a previous and current student of Prepatomy, what's something that maybe I didn't really uh, talk about too much that you think that these people here on the phone should know about Prepatomy classes? Well, this is great. I'm, uh, I work 
in enterprise risk management in my job uh, with East Carolina University. And I'll just share real briefly that uh, Prepatomy has been a really uh, positive way to sort of accelerate myself through uh, several of the uh, the courses. And, I, and I've been, uh, I've set a pretty, arguably maybe a little bit too, too tough of a pace for myself uh, to try to get on through to get my ARME. Uh, I, I'll just I'll, I'll touch on three things real, real briefly because I heard them come up. Uh, one thing that I really have enjoyed about Probatomy is uh, it has forced me uh, to be keep on a schedule and to take it small bites at a time at, at a, you know the pace each week on Wednesday nights to have that that time with the online uh, connection. And I had not used the GoToWebinar uh, except for just an occasional briefing, but I've never used it for a course. And I was very impressed with how, how easy it was to use and how sufficient uh, not, not only the quality of the, the audio and the, the slide presentation, but having the little ch uh, chat window there to uh, feed questions and additional comments in on the side while uh, the main presenter is, is going through the slide decks uh, each week. And that's a great combination. So, so that, that really kept me on track with my own personal study. Uh, I did uh, 44, just completed uh, ARM. Uh, excuse me, 54, just completed 55, and then I, on my own I did ERM 57, which that was, that was almost a bridge too far, I kind of doubled up, but since I was working in it, I was familiar with the material, and I went ahead, and, and I will just say it's a lot more painful when you're trying to uh, self-navigate through the, the course book and, and do your own uh, you know, uh, cards and so forth and try to work through it. I, I did pass got through it, but it was a little bit different than having that group experience with the online class. So uh, I'll give a positive testimonial for Prepatomy. I'm ready to start uh, ARM 56 and get into that next week. Uh, the, the, two, the two other things real briefly I wanted to mention, because someone else brought that up, the, uh, I probably didn't, get, uh, didn't pay enough attention to the study guide uh, along with the study, and, and, and it's really important to do the balance, with, and you still have to do, as Sandy said, the the heavy lifting in that training, even though you got a great coach, uh, so so you sort of have to balance between all the materials, and not uh, not neglect any any one of the sort of the three the three legs of the of the stool. Mm -hmm. uh, that being on not online presentation, but also the the uh, preparation with your own reading at a time, and it's very easy to do it since the uh, curriculum and the schedule will pace you through it at a at a reasonable pace. Right. Uh, so so that's important. And then uh, Sandy mentioned also that, and I found this very helpful since most of us have a real job during the day, so this is extra. You're in inevitably probably going to miss one or more sessions, but having that recorded on on their site uh, was was fantastic. I mean, you can go in there very easily, go back up, dial it up at your own convenience, and it comes through, and just and you can just uh, uh, roll right through the, the the class that you missed at, at your schedule and catch up. Or if you're weak in a couple of sections, going back and, and either listening to all or part of that presentation again to reinforce some of the concepts, I found that was very helpful. So, um, you know, uh, that's that was I guess that's my chime in for the evening, and I look forward to uh, my third class experience coming up starting next week uh, to get on into uh, into 56. That's great, and thank you, Tim, so much, and I look forward to having you in the 56 class as well. So thank you for your comments. Really appreciate it. So I'm showing you on the screen how you can connect outside of class through email or telephone or through LinkedIn or through the Facebook uh, page or through Twitter. I actually have my LinkedIn connected to the Twitter, so any um, articles that I post for instructors or from fellow students, it gets tweeted out as well. And uh, we're almost at the end of the recording, and I just want to leave you with, um, with this, one of my favorite quotes, the surest way not to fail is to de determine to succeed. And one of the things that I used to do when I was studying CPCU, and I still do this when I took the Aaron 50 four and the 56 this year, I write a little sticky note that I will pass and I put it on my mirror and it reminds me that I need to do something every day for that darned course, whether it's reading, filling out the course guide, taking the smart exam, attending the class, listening to the recording, reviewing the notes, and all of it will definitely make sense if you follow that process. So 
What I am going to do right now is um, for those that are listening to this recording and you have any questions about the, how to get to the ethics course, the exam pass rates, the institute's community, finding a live class, smart practice exams, or joining the Prepatomy virtual classroom community, I invite you to call or email me anytime. And um, for those students that want to stick around for just a few more minutes, I'll show you those little nuggets of information off recording. So at this time I'm going to stop the recording.